Hey, welcome to everybody. I'm pleased to be here, the moderator for the United States Greenville Economic Development Summit. Our uh, breakout session room six is new economy opportunities. Um, so I was thinking with the size of the room, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be good if we maybe just did uh, a round table uh, and had posed the question in advance, what are the opportunities for the region um, in the new economy? So maybe we can just maybe do round circle, uh, introduce yourself, and add uh, your answer to that question. Any thoughts you might have about that? And then we'll see where we're at for time for discussion. So I see people probably in a different order than everybody else. So I will start with uh, how I see them on my screen. Maybe if, you, if that's okay with everybody on board, that would be Jennifer Miller to start. And then it would move over to Jeanette from there. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jennifer Miller. I'm the Manager of Economic Development and Tourism for the Town of Smith Falls and happy to be here this afternoon. Um, it's an interesting economy for sure. I think there's some uh, really neat opportunities presenting uh, themselves in Smith Falls. We're certainly seeing um, uh, a housing boom that we haven't experienced in many, many years. And we're very grateful for, uh, and that seems to be sustaining itself well through this COVID pandemic. So I think, I think I'll just stick with that one and, and speak to that as, as a great opportunity that's, um, that's presenting itself now in Smith Falls. Okay, we were talking about that earlier after um, Dr. Trevin Stratton was speaking, he, he mentioned that. So yeah, uh, Jeanette. Good morning, every or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeanette Johnston, and I'm the Business Development Coordinator at the Leeds Grenville Small Business Center. We are housed in the city of Brockville um, building, but we serve all of Lower Leeds and Grenville. We're provincially funded, and our mandate is to support entrepreneurs in starting and growing their businesses. Um, and in terms of new opportunities, uh, with the upcoming um, increase um, in the um, internet opportunities um, that was that were talked about this morning, the new projects coming, I think that it opens our rural community up to so much. Um, opportunity and I'm thinking of the small businesses because that's who I work with every day and the the makers so the, the ones who make food from their homes and sell it um, I think that uh, what Smith Falls used to have I'd love to have in in Leeds and Grunville again where people can go and make their food from um, a central um a central building and do their deliveries from there. I'd love to see that happen. And I think it can happen in the future here. Perfect, thank you. So uh, like local food supply chains this is something that I thought is an opportunity as well. So yeah, I think that everybody's a lot of uh, like shop local and campaigns and things like that. Food's definitely a big sector. So thanks, Jeanette. Um, next I have Terry Lynn and then Jonah Delaney. Hi there, I'm Terry Lynn. I work for the North Grenville Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we represent our business members here in North Grenville. Thank you, Terry. Lynn, did you want to add anything you've seen as a new um, opportunities for the new economy? Um, well, we have noticed uh, an awesome amount of growth here in North Grenville. So we have, um, we had 20 new startup businesses um, and we have, uh, about nine like store facing storefront um, businesses opening up um, in the North Grenville area recently, which is incredible during this uh, pandemic. So um, that's been awesome. So supporting them, getting out, meeting them, seeing what they're uh, needing at this moment. And it changes day to day. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Um, and. Jonah Delaney, are you there? Um, okay, well, maybe we'll wait for her to come back and come off of mute. Hi, Deanna, do you wanna add anything? No? Okay. I'm just gonna- Hi, I'm here. Oh, hi, how are you? Hi, uh, it's Joan, there's a typo in my oh. first name. Okay, um, gotcha. On there, I, I don't know who did that, but uh, it, I'm correcting it. Um, I am a counselor for Rideau Lakes Township. Okay. 
I'm not on the Economic Development Committee yet, probably in the new year. And I'm trying to get a sense of what's going on in the Leeds Granville and specifically Rideau Lakes. Now, I agree with Jeanette, we are a rural area and we're going to need to do online improvements, uh, broadband. But uh, that seems to be happening and we're seeing tremendous pressure on the housing situation in Rideau Lakes as, as other places. What I would like to get out of this session is an idea of what new businesses would address the uh, influx of newcomers. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jeanette. And then I did see Deanna Clark was in the room. I don't know if she's going to be getting Deanna. Are you there? Is there anything you wanted to add? No. Okay. Um, so if not, I think I think we've touched on Norm. Hi, Norm. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Hi. Did you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and, and see what you had to uh, add? Sure. Okay. I probably don't have a really good idea about um, new opportunities in Leeds Granville um, from the point of view of the general business community. We're a small company. Um, our company is called I Waste Not Systems. And we're working in the zero waste and circular economy and sustainable de development uh, area. And uh, we see an opportunity there because uh, Canada is moving and the rest of the world is moving. Ontario as well is moving away from the old waste paradigm where we make something and then we sell it to people and then they throw it into a hole in the ground or a little bit of it, maybe 25% is recycled. We think there's an opportunity to save those resources and, and bring them around again. Uh, so uh, our company is involved. We do a couple of web apps. One's called a recycling guide and directory, and we call it Recyclopedia. And basically, it tells people for pretty well anything that you want on the face of the earth, uh, what the right way to do to uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, zero waste it is. And the other one is like Kijiji, but it's for waste material for organizations. So we sell those to universities. We have two universities on the system, University of British Columbia and University of Manitoba. And we also sell those to states and provinces like uh, the state of Minnesota. We're just putting a new recyclopedia online for the state of Delaware. So uh, what we're looking to do is grow our business in Leeds, Cranville. And, and um, because we do so much business outside of this area, uh, I haven't been involved actively with the local business community uh, mm -hmm. with you guys and so on, because I don't, we haven't sold locally, uh, but we're at a point now where we're starting to look at Leeds, Granville, uh, Kingston, Frontenac and Prince Edward, uh, and Lennox and Addington, and, and uh, we'll get more involved in this area. Perfect. Okay, well, you've definitely come to the right spot. It's good to meet you. Uh, and then I see we also have Todd in the room, Todd Royer. And if you want to go ahead, Todd, if you're there. Okay. I think then what we'll do is if they hop on, that's great. Just feel free to jump in anytime, guys, if you are there. Um, I'm just going to touch on a couple of things and maybe we can just have an open discussion about them. The, the housing market seemed to come up a couple of times. It's also something we've noticed here. Um, so I'm from Valley Heartland CFDC. We cover the northern part of Leeds as well as Lanark County uh, at our CFDC office. We also have seen a big increase in the demand for housing. Um, and local supply chain has definitely been uh, something we've seen in the last eight months, a lot more demand for that. Another thing that we've seen a lot of is automation, streamlining processes. And, and that's just, I think, being forced upon people by trying to limit human touch and human interaction because of COVID. So we've seen some of those uh, types of changes happening as well as a lot of startups. Surprisingly, we've seen a lot of startups in our area during a pandemic. So I, I think that's a good sign. Um, but uh, nothing that nobody hasn't touched on already. So we're seeing all a lot of the same stuff. Is there anything else that anybody wants to add that they think is 
in high demand or seeing a lot of, and the internet opportunity as, as well, it's, as long as we can all get uh, connected early. And I'm yeah. sorry, Tina, I wasn't uh, fully connected earlier, I think when you maybe asked, asked me, yeah. um, but I just wanted to say, uh, welcome to everyone, and I'm glad that uh, our day is going so well. And I just would like to hear part of your discussion. Good stuff, Kay. Thanks, Deanna. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add about the housing market? Um, just because it's something internally we've been talking a lot about, um, and the huge demand for houses, and just you know how local contractors are going to keep up, how municipalities are going to draw people to their areas. And then in terms of the job market and the demographics, like I know here in a large part of Lanark County, Carlton Place, Beckwith area, they've got very high population growth year over year for five years in a row. Um, the houses aren't affordable for first time families, uh, I think. And it's those types of jobs that, um, you know, that a first time family or first time homeowners would want to buy. And I don't know that people driving in from Ottawa for that type of wage We'll make that commute. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that evolves over the next couple of years. Does anybody have anything they want to add to that? Joan? Yeah, absolutely. Jump in anytime. Okay. Um, one thing we're noticing in Rideau Lakes is that there's a lack of available land for sale for building. And that is partly in relation to the severance policies provincially that uh, would not allow um, owners of large tracts of land to sever more than three lots. So once they've done that, and most of them have, then they are restricted to severing any more, which means that very few building lots are becoming available. So that's, this is something that is a problem for us. Yeah, right. I think, um... The more rural areas like that, it's, it's a pretty common problem. Um, and there are those restrictions in place. I don't know the ins and outs of all of them, but I know I know it's very similar. I think in Beckwith Township, it has to be a, a minimum of two acre lots to build at a lot of the subdivisions. So yeah, I think they face a lot of the same, same type of things. Um, another thing that we had noted was that as people stop making that commute to Ottawa, we see that they're also starting to then open their own business and work for their, themselves. And then that's giving an increase in, in the entrepreneurs we have in the area, uh, mm -hmm. which, which is good. Um, we're in a little bit of a niche area where there's a lot of food and beverage manufacturing and um, you know, smaller scale, cheese, like cheese, kombucha, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. so I think the pandemic has really brought an increase to those types of businesses. Yes. We've, seen, we've seen a lot of that. So Joan, has, has that subject of the whole severance uh, process gone to um, MPP Clark or MP Barrett? I'm not sure whether it's provincial or federal. Has that been taken to them? I think it has in the past, Jeanette. And um, we, we keep getting no back. And we're, right now we're trying to finalize our newest um, official plan, our updated one. And we're asking for permission to allow a few more severances. There is some pushback. We're pushing back again ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a tug of war. But uh, until then, like we have this demand, people cruising around looking for properties. They're not even some of them making it to market. They're going so quickly. Yes. And um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a problem because then your economic development gets stifled because your population's not growing. Mm -hmm. And as it was pointed out, there are a number of people wanting to move here and open their own businesses. So, you know, it, it, until we can release more land, we're, we're sort of compressed, I guess. Right. So the opportunity really lies in figuring out what it is that the powers that be want and what lies behind their decisions so that you can help um, mitigate those concerns and get things moving. I think it's, um, the, the province wants an intensification in the settlement areas. They want to, to 
you consolidate all of their services into these, these settlement communities and the available land is not in those communities necessarily, it's outside. So it, with the province saying like, we want development there, but we're saying, but the land isn't there. There's a dichotomy, there's that um, problem with, with freeing it up. And until we can do that, like I said, we're, we're stuck. Right. If, if you kind of look at look at the situation, uh, that probably is true in Westport and Rideau Lakes, but I would think in Brockville and Prescott, uh, they have a different issue. There's a fair amount, I think, of developable land within those cities. There are lots of vacant properties, and in that case, intensification and rezoning maybe would, would uh, help out. Uh, so it probably one size doesn't fit all in, in that case, yeah. at least from what I could see. You're right. Yeah. Does the, does any of the local municipalities have any investment readiness sites or any sort of a resource available uh, for people to go and see uh, available land or service lots or anything that's available in their area? And if they do, who keeps it updated? Okay. I think it goes through each municipality and then the county also supports that and the city of Rockville and the town mm -hmm. of Prescott and the town of Gownockley, a separated municipality. So it kind of gets spread out a bit and maybe a bit hard to navigate. But if potential business owners come to the county or the city or to us, mm -hmm. then we can direct them back to the municipalities. Yeah, typically that's uh, what we do as well. We direct them back to the municipality, but it's uh, it's hard to ask municipal staff to keep you know the those sorts of things updated and constantly updated because there's right. a lot of work involved in it. So there's probably an opportunity there um, for either counties or municipalities to kind of work together and have some sort of a collective database or template uh, that they all use, so it's all familiar. Um, to the person that's looking, you know, they move from one municipality's website to the other or the county or the county website and they're seeing the same thing, you know what I mean? Um, so that could always be an opportunity, I think. Um, but I, I do would find... There be an, would there be an opportunity uh, for the, the um, economic development agencies and the municipalities to work together to do one website so that only one person had to keep it up and rather than having five or six. I know that it's competitive and that uh, municipalities might not want to participate, but it would be maybe a little bit more efficient. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. Yep. It, there's definitely benefit in it. Of course, I, I think anytime you can bring everybody together, you know, collectively to work on something like that, there's benefit. Uh, we're we're launching something very similar to that uh, here in Lanark County um, over the next, I'd say, six, eight to ten months, something like that. But definitely something that Leeds and Grenville could look at establishing or in which municipalities are interested. Actually, I could add uh, add to that. Um, for several years, we did have on our county's invest website, we had uh, av uh, available lands and buildings, which we actually was fed into from real estate companies on a, on a nightly update. Um, that, that has since we've have to have to revamp that, but that is something we're planning on doing in the future because it worked quite well, actually. Yeah, I, I bet it's interesting. We talked about uh, the role that maybe real estate agents could play in, in that mm -hmm. type of thing and keeping it updated and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. I think what happened was there was a change in the various uh, uh, realtor boards in this area. So we couldn't continue with the feed that we had been using. So now we have to redo these sorts of things to get it back up. But yeah. that is a plan. That is in our plans. Yeah. Um, yeah. We uh, we did include it as well in ours. And when we looked at this county and Leonard County as a whole, it really came down to just having one resource for businesses, really. 
Um, there's, you know, many chambers, DBAs, business associations, all the different services, investment readiness plans, things like that. So kind of bringing it all together full circle was the goal there too. Good, is there any of the other, I think we just have maybe three or four minutes left. Any of the other topics um, that anybody wanted to share, maybe an example of or ask about um, the internet opportunity, maybe I think that's always a hot topic in our area and the ability for everybody to get access to internet. We always seem to be told that it's coming and it's just around the corner, but I think that the, um, the pandemic really opened a lot of people's eyes to just the amount of people that don't have access right now. And the, we looked at uh, school-aged children being at home and having to do online school. I think that really brought awareness to it. Anybody else? Just seeing the um, amount of growth in our, in, I live in Brockville right now, just seeing the amount of growth in Brockville in terms of people coming from Toronto and Ottawa because they can telecommute now and um, having that broadband is going to be so important for us to keep that movement going. Uh, we haven't grown here in the city of Brockville in 25 years so if we could keep this up then um, we can say the pandemic boosted our, our population. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. I, I hadn't realized it that, that what you just said about the 25 years, that's remarkable. It's crazy, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's been more than 25 years. I think when, yeah. when I moved here, when I was four years old, the city of Brockville was at 20,000 and they had just become a city when we moved here. So it really hasn't grown in that time period. So, and I'm 40, 49. So it's been 40, 45 years since the city became a city and mm -hmm. hasn't really grown much since. Yeah. Does anybody anticipate or with the growth they see in their area, does that seem to fill the demand that they also see in their area for jobs or for employees? Like, do you see them being equivalent or enough? I haven't really seen or heard anything anecdotal either. I think people are keeping their jobs from away, like whether it's Ottawa or Toronto. Mm -hmm. Deanna, have you heard anything around? Because we have such a hard time getting talent and people resources here to do the work that needs to be done already. I think it is starting to change, but yes, the last census, there was not very much movement in terms of population growth. Uh, I think about half of our municipalities, of all the 13 municipalities, uh, numbers went down. Uh, one, a few went up uh, slightly. The largest growth was, of course, in North Grenville, uh, which, you know, has become uh, a bedroom community for Ottawa and all along that corridor there. Uh, so, yeah, it would be nice to see some growth. And I agree with Jeanette because I've lived in this area a long time, too, and it, it hasn't changed in, in Brockville for for a long, long time. Oh. So it would be good to see growth everywhere. Yes. Not just like slight growth, like yeah. one and two percent. Yeah, I, I definitely think that, that we're on our way to that. I think that's what's happening now. So I do have to cut everybody off. It is time to go to our next session. I thought there was a video that would kind of kick in and take us there, but Patrick has just told me that's not the case. So I believe we'll head off to our next session. It was good talking with you all. Uh, enjoy your next session and have a great weekend. Uh, my name is Tina Stevens. Uh, thanks for hopping on uh, this breakout session today. It's the last one of the day before everybody gets to start enjoying the weekend, so that's nice. Um, welcome to the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville ECDEV Summit. So this breakout session is new economy opportunities. And I think then what we can do is maybe just go from uh, person to person if you want to just maybe do an introduction and uh, some answers to the question that was posed. What are the opportunities for the region in the new economy? If you just want to throw some things out about that and then we can see what we have collectively uh, in terms of commonalities and maybe you have a chat about them time permitting. So I'll start with what I see on my screen and that would go with Cindy Bolton first and then Kathy Shepard and then Michelle. Sound good? All right, hello, good afternoon. 
<laughs> My name is Cindy Bolton and I'm serving the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville as the Digital Squad Services member. Um, I have a partner in crime here, Rebecca Breeden, who is uh, probably on the tourism chat and we're going to combine our information afterwards. Uh, I've been in the capacity for about three and a half weeks now looking at another three months. We're uh, clamoring to get as many applications in as possible as the grant finishes up, closes November 30th. So after that, we'll be offering our services in the area for free to small business. Yay. Oh, perfect. That's good. There seems to be a lot of uptake on that mm -hmm. program. So that's really good. Yep. Have you seen any um, new opportunities emerging in the, in the three weeks that you have since you have been there? Or? Um, I am a, an artist and an artist at heart. So I'm always looking for creative ways to innovate through any kind of challenge. Um, I think creativity, uh, that's what really appealed to this chat for me. Creativity is the way that we're going to get through a lot of this and even before pre pandemic, right, moving into the next level. So it's coming up, up with creative ways for our economy to grow. Um, so my boots on the ground and my ears to the hearts of all the small business people that I'm talking with. Um, I do, and in the last, oh. <laughs> oh, are you good? Yeah, I've just got something else running in the background. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it's all good. That's okay. There we go. Oh, it's oh, it's Wendy or it's Anne just directing us through. Okay. okay. All right, sorry, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm looking for creative ways through these small businesses that I'm chatting with. In the previous chat that I was with um, about small business and suggestions moving forward, Karen McDonald Hurley did bring up the fact that we probably have a need for a, co a coordinator of some sort, so boots on the ground, even moving beyond digital uh, Main Street as to what we can do and how we can help these businesses as efficiently as we can in the time that we have before most of them have to close their doors. So there's only a window of opportunity um, and to help them out with whatever grants to coordinate whatever help that they can access very quickly for them. So that's what came out of Maybe even like that. the implementation process. Mm -hmm. um, to help them, right? They're, they're clamoring just to get through every day. So we just, just someone to knock on their door in the middle of nowhere and say, hey, you know, we're, we're right. here to help. Yeah, no, they're thankful. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Kathy Shepard, I believe. Hi, everybody. I'm Kathy Shepard. I own Shepard and Associates, an accounting company here in Kempfall, and I'm currently the chair of the North Granville Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, wearing two hats, we see a lot of different things that are happening, and right now, uh, my job, my primary job, is my business of accounting. So, we're finding that. Um, the grant process or the application, the subsidy process with the government uh, has consumed a lot of our time. So it's created new work for us. And uh, that's by virtue of everybody else's misfortune, but it has been an opportunity there. Um, so having to go online right now and having everybody uh, try to do commercial activity through the internet has also created a new opportunity for us in that we're teaching people how to use technology and how to uh, make it work faster in their business. So, so there's a lot of opportunity for us in that growth and uh, things that people don't know, obviously. But um, so it's more in a support level uh, right. that we've found growth. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't doubt it one bit. Um, my accountants are in huge demand uh, lately, I think, across the board. So thanks for that. Uh, Kathy, no. Um, I then have Michelle and then Hillary following, okay? Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Andrews. I uh, work at the Maitland Tower site at the bottom end of the uh, Leeds Guideville geography. And uh, we are uh, just in the process of launching a new um, a charitable organization, a new uh, social enterprise that's going to be focused on building community resilience. And I'm um, keen to learn um, where best we can help. A couple of the thoughts we have are that the COVID crisis has certainly exposed uh, the vulnerabilities of folks on the margins, um, food security, housing security, that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and we have our, uh, 
it's very clear to us that the the ongoing difficulties that the climate crisis presents will only actually make all of this even harder as we go forward. So how can we look after um, each other and uh, and find ways to um, work together in this new economy that's going to have even more pressures? Um, the other part of the new economy are all the opportunities around, um, you know, for example, moving to a, a fully renewable energy grid over the next couple of decades and how can Leeds Grenville get on that bandwagon soon? Um, and hopefully we're going to see the feds um, bring in some incentives. I know that the Ontario government has announced a plan. I don't know much about it on, uh, you know, demonstration community microgrids as one example. So to me, that's a new economy opportunity coming our way. And how can we work together to, um, to take advantage of all those to get more people working and to be ready for the future? Perfect. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Uh, Hillary, are you good? Yeah, so I'm Hillary. I'm in uh, North Grenville, so the opposite end of Michelle there. Um, and as soon as you asked that question, Tina, my first thought was we've had so many home-based businesses open, but I just actually opened up my list of the about two dozen businesses we've had open since March, and only two are home-based. Um, so although I think we're getting in contact with more home-based businesses, we're still seeing a lot open in your traditional brick-and-mortar settings, which is really exciting to see. Um, obviously we talked about broadband and, um, internet earlier, and that's going to be huge, um, for some of the home-based businesses we have gotten in touch with more regularly over the past few months. Um, so we'll be keeping our eye on that. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, maybe the next three up, we'll go Kim, Jamie, and then Claire. Kim? Yeah, I'm hard to see here. I wasn't planning on being on video. <laughs> uh, I'm from MPAC, so I don't typically work in the, a typical economic development sense. I'm more just showing these sessions to hear about um, how we're supporting our local communities and what's going on in our local municipalities and things like that, just to kind of get our ears to the ground and find out what's going on. Yeah, in the last session, Kim, there was a lot of discussion around uh, housing, the demand mm -hmm. for housing. Yeah, so it's interesting to hear um, about stuff like that for us, just so that we can get a sense of kind of trends that are happening in municipalities and commun communities and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. The in the last session, somebody had said they're seeing growth in Brockville for probably the first time in 25 years. So I thought mm -hmm. that was rather interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing that in a lot of our, just in the past year, a lot of our smaller municipalities, because we were able to pick up um, just as much growth as we had in any any past year, given the challenges that we had to overcome with COVID. It was pretty incredible to see, but yeah. a lot of our very small municipalities that are growing kind of on that edge of, of Ottawa and then bringing the industrial part um, because of COVID. So places like the city of Brockville with that new 3M plant that we're building um, to do the N95 masks. And then in Johnstown, um, areas like that that are getting business due to the pandemic. It's been really nice to hear about things like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, thanks, Kim. Mm. Jamie and then Claire. Hi, uh, this is Jamie with St. Lawrence College. Um, that's a pretty big question. I think that with COVID-19, there haven't really been new trends or industries that have come forward. It's just more been a massive accelerant of trends that sort of already existed. Uh, so obviously e-commerce is, is booming and I don't see that slowing down post COVID. It's going to be something we, that's just really here, really prevalent and a huge growing industry that we need to make sure uh, we're part of and we're supporting. Um, you know, there's also just new industries like cannabis production. I, I know like obviously that's happening in Smith Falls, but um, you know, how can we make sure that we're a part of that, that industry as well as it continues to grow over the next two, three, 10 years. Um, yeah. You know, as well as, as we heard earlier, some of the discussions, if there's going to be $5 billion in investment in Ontario for the auto industry, um, particularly with a big focus on electric cars, um, we need to make sure that you know, we're getting a piece of that somehow, like I, maybe not in core production, but yeah. some feeding into it. Right. Uh, 
And, th- and then I guess just not, We sh- if we're looking, if we're really kind of thinking blue sky and looking to 2030, let's say, uh, the traditional economy is not really going to look the same. So you're going to see the gig economy growing. You're going to see the sharing economy growing, access economy. Things like Uber are going to be creeping into more rural communities. Um, so we want to make sure that we're positioned to take advantage of those opportunities or to attract those types of opportunities. Yeah, you're right. I I completely agree as well as ensuring like equitable access to resources, I think will be uh, important because I do believe a lot of these trends are, you know, they've kind of been kicked into high gear. They were on their way anyway, but now they're definitely uh, getting us there faster. So thank you for that. Somebody had asked in the chat that I restate the question. So the question was, what are the opportunities for the region in the new economy? And then we'll go on to Lisa, then Colin, then Brian. Hello. Um, I do agree with uh, Jamie's comments with regards to Uber. Um, I think from an employment perspective, when you if there's any employment agencies on board to really push if people are looking for a part-time job or other opportunities. I know that um, from a tourism perspective, being able to get from the lock station to the towns or to the local attractions is a big challenge. Um, There's only one or two taxi companies that actually do it now and their their rates are crazy. Um, As well as they can take up to three hours in order to get a cab to the lock station and take you somewhere and and be able to like take you for dinner. Um, so that is a huge challenge. And I know even in Smith Falls, there was an Uber Eats type company that was trying to come to the region to deliver takeout for people, but there's a demand for takeout, but no one applied as a driver. Oh so, no, it's going really strong. It's called Valley Eats. They're here in yeah. Smith Falls. and. Um, yeah, we use them probably three times a week. Yeah. yeah. So I do think if, if people are looking for part-time opportunities, you remind people that that's an opportunity. Um, yep. So I think people forget that that is something they could easily do from a part-time perspective, especially knowing that we have a lot of retired people in the community that's what um, yeah. Yeah. that they may really enjoy talking with the local tourist and, um, but not working every single day, just working for a couple hours a day. Um, is probably one of the things that is lacking most in the region, especially Mm -hmm. even last year, there was no shuttle from the winery to the harbor because of COVID. Um, So there was a lot of people who wanted to get to the winery, but they didn't want to have to walk. So they weren't able to get to the winery, for example. And so someone, if they were just a local Uber driver, and everyone coming from Toronto and Montreal are used to Uber, so they probably already have the app on their phone. Right, um, yeah, for sure. It's interesting, We I was recently at an event where we talked about the exact same thing and, and about you know the aging population and, and part-time work. And, and I think what it came down to in that conversation was that the rate of pay. Um, do you know what I mean? A lot of people in that lifestyle um, probably aren't wanting to take on those types of jobs for the pay that they're, they're probably willing to pay. So there's a way to kind of find out maybe and fill that gap a little bit more might be beneficial, but thanks Lisa. We'll move on. There's Colin, Brian, and then Eleanor. Hi, my name's Colin. I'm from the employment center in Brock Grove. Um, I don't know about uh, new opportunities, but what we're seeing a lot of or uh, working a lot with people on transferable skills to that are coming out of the hospitality type industry because of all the slowdowns and layoffs, et cetera, and trying to coach them to use their transferable skills and what they are to, you know, pivot into another role. Uh, The other thing we're seeing quite a lot of is the older workers that some of you have already mentioned that could, should be retired, if you will, that are now wanting to get back in the workforce. And, And it's not just because they want something to do, it's but because they actually need to work to supplement pensions, income, that sort of thing. So it's it's really trying to learn with the, you know, the mention of all the broadband, um, what's happening with that and new businesses that could spark from that is to how to support people that are coming into the agency to, to be able to capitalize on some of these new opportunities that are coming. Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
And Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I didn't know I'd be speaking, but um, just a couple of comments, I guess, and somebody had sort of mentioned um, uh, the idea of charging stations and uh, Vic Fidelli's talk about uh, uh, Ford coming in with the electric electric vehicle um, initiative in uh, Oshawa area. That That's something you don't see very often around here. I know of my area, I'm in Spencerville, and we do have quite a few people driving Teslas now and uh, Volts and things like that, where they're sort of relying on their their home electricity to do that charging. But if you've got people coming to your area, especially in a in a downtown area, like a small spot like Spencerville, Brockville has them up at the Petro Canada, but um, that's something there that is probably needed in a lot of the small areas. I'm thinking like Westport and Maryville. Uh, if they don't have them, that's a, uh, a big thing that a lot of the outside areas would be looking for when they're coming in. Yes. Um, the, the one thing I was thinking of too, and we've talked about that in our office, I'm an insurance broker. And looking at my clients where I would go to uh, go to the office to see the client or meet with employees, um, we're not doing that now, I think in the future we still won't be doing a lot of that. So I'm thinking forward to a lot of the commercial real estate people, uh, there has to be something that uh, probably some initiative in the future where we're gonna be looking to try and see how do we get people back into commercial space so that we don't have uh, empty commercial buildings and uh, vacant real estate sitting around either. Um, the other thing I was thinking of on my putting my insurance hat on as we talk about the home based business, as we talk about vacant locations, if they have real estate, uh, there's a lot of insurance implications there that um, all those people, whether they're opening home based business or they've lost their tenants in their building, they need to make their insurance company and their insurance broker aware of that because that can um, implement. Imp implicate what they would get um, insurance wise if there was some kind of a loss there could be uh, gaps in coverage so they have to communicate with everybody on, on what they're doing with their space perfect yeah that's actually a really good point um, and we advise clients of that all the time when they're making that change you know did you reach out to your insurance do you know the processes and the steps that you need to follow if you're relocating or, or transferring to home based business or whatever so thank you for that Brian um, we'll go Eleanor Allison. Yes, hello. Um, I have noticed this year, uh, especially with the pandemic, that there's been such a rise in people wanting local. So whether you're making a mask or you're taking your produce from your from your farm or whatever and adding value to it, seems to be a real niche, and people seem to really really want it. I think that will last afterwards, but it's the uh, capacity and as you get bigger you're going to need more room you're not going to be able to do this in your living room sewing up masks so you're not going to be able to make all that stuff so some of those empty buildings that brian was just talking about could they be repurposed for a community kitchen or a community whatever yep. but then they need help in the business plan how do i how do i walk through all that and I would assume that that would be your job Tina yeah um it is uh there's lots of resources for that type of thing though and I think in all the communities there's a small business advisory centers as well uh they're great for that type of thing uh we do have a lot of makers the same type of like maker type of businesses in our area that that just is exactly what happens and they come in and they know their product and they know what they're making what they're doing and they're so great at it but they've not run a business, right? So they don't really know about the insurance aspect of it. And so, yeah, we do absolutely see a lot of that. Um, but local supply chains have been something that we've seen a lot of opportunity in as well in our county in the last eight months it, and both counties actually. And it's, uh, I think it is gonna keep growing. I think a lot of them will stick. And that's a really great point about the vacant, uh, vacant commercial space. And I'm wondering also about some of that vacant commercial space. Could it be used as a regional, a regional hub so that we're not, especially for food supplies, 
but that we're not having to go national for everything being brought in from one location. Like all the grocery stores and that have gone to that. Everything mm-hmm. comes from, like, it'll go from Ottawa, go all the way to Toronto and come back to Ottawa to the grocery store. <laughs> right. um, okay. Not seeing the, okay. but, but could that be a, a, a new opportunity and start being more regional based with those sorts of things? Yeah, just a thought. Yeah, no, for sure. I think uh, I think those are the kind of conversations that we're gonna see and hear a lot of it in the very near future, definitely. Um, so Eleanor, thank you. We'll move on. There's Allison, Sabby, Barley, and then Joanne. Hi. Um, so just to change gears just a little bit, um, because a lot of the opportunity points have been talked about. Um, just during the early months of this, uh, a number of our businesses took the opportunity to um, do renovations, things like that, because they would have been closed otherwise. So they were already, you know, not going to have customers So versus closing later on down the road, um, you know, and increasing that span without customers, they kind of t- uh, invested in themselves during that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing is um, some of our businesses, you know, expanded their programs to some degree. So I know of one that partnered up with another um, a, a cidery place. So they sold uh, prepared meals. So they joined up with the cidery place and then they, you know, sold them as packages. So it, it helped each other out. Yeah. And then just in general, we did have a few new businesses uh, start up around here as well. Yeah, we've seen lots of opportunity for collaboration as well among businesses to do just that type of thing. So that's a good opportunity. I definitely agree with that. Thanks, Allison. Uh, Sabi? Okay, we'll move on. Barley, are you there? And then what about Joanne or Sandra? Okay, well, Sandra oh, here. I had trouble dialing in and I only just came in on it just uh, moments ago. Okay. And I have a great interest in um, the new uh, economy, so to speak. And I just wondered if you started things off by defining what you mean uh, when I talk about the new economy, I'm talking about the bioeconomy and the interconnections between um, um, uh, the wide variety of uh, manufacturing and so on that we have, the opportunities around agriculture and how do we uh, take advantage of the maple products, for example, in our area and the, um, the potential potency of the maple industry in our area as part of the new bioeconomy. So I don't know if all of this has been covered or if I'm in the wrong session, but uh, no. that would be my, I am in the wrong session? No, no you're, you're in the right session and some of it has been covered. Um, I love that you did touch on the, the maple syrup thing. It's something we talk about a lot here. Um, we did talk a little bit about local supply chains and those type of things. So yeah, you're definitely in the right session. Um, okay. Yep, yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, joining in. Some of the other uh, some of the other topics that came up of uh, common interest were transportation, transferable skills, uh, a lot of commercial space uh, becoming available, and how do we look at filling that in the future? Um, and just those types of things. And we only have a couple people left to kind of go through and chime in. So if, if Barley or Joanne or Sabi are on the call and want to do that, they can. If not, we will um, go back and see if there's anybody that wants to add something that they may have missed or ask somebody to elaborate on something that they have heard. Well, we can do that. Uh, actually, I, it's... Uh... Claire Smith here. I was on and then I got bumped off, but I'm back. I wouldn't mind just chiming in. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Rideau Lakes and a few years ago at the Economic Development Summit in Kempville, they were going over sort of demographics projections for our area. And we have the highest proportion of seniors in Ontario, I think, or at least Eastern Ontario. Um, but that does now seem to be changing. Um, so it's been uh, promising, I guess, uh, with the housing market 
um, a lot better than it used to be. Like you don't see abandoned houses around hardly at all anymore. Uh, you just see sold signs. So that's, I think, an opportunity. And, and now on council at Rideau Lakes, we've really pivoted from, you know, any growth, we need growth, we need any growth. And now I think the new challenge is going to be how do we want to grow and how do we, you know, direct that growth towards our Oh, I think maybe Claire got disconnected. I think where she was going was targeted growth. How do they target that? Sorry, but just rather than, rather than uh, having what we are getting, which is all of these little, you know, fingers of development into undeveloped areas on private low lanes, you know, into environmentally uh, the previously undeveloped areas, which is where it's all going rather than trying to protect those, those you know, ecological important areas uh, and focus on, on revitalizing or... Or at least finding a balance for that, right? Um, seem to be some of the hurdles, but I think in the last session as well, this was talked about an awful lot. It was availability of, of vacant land for development. Um, I do believe Claire's gotten booted out again, but that was sounded to me like where she was headed. Uh, if there's anybody else who wants to chime in, we probably only have another minute or so to do that. Um, if not, um, does anybody want to add anything else about the housing market? Seems to be a hot topic. Any solutions or other opportunities that haven't been discussed? Maybe if um, I could just add, I was uh, I got to tour a new tiny homes project that the um, employment oh, okay. center is running with um, in Brockville. And uh, so there's 10 people getting job training over a 30 month, well, there's three cohorts, 10 each cohort for 30 weeks, I think, or something like that. It's okay. a fantastic skills training and it's gonna address affordable housing if we can get municipalities to open their minds and change some bylaws and zoning and whatnot to uh, and allow for these tiny houses to actually get you know, put in around our communities. But it's such a solution in so many ways. Yeah. Um, and you know, Brockville's busy training a bunch of people who are going to want to build them. They're, I, I was so I spent three hours with them yesterday. They're really incredible people that yeah. will be great, great crew members for any construction crew. But many of them have actually really got the tiny house bug. It seems oh, that's good to hear. I didn't know that was happening. I find that the tiny house thing is something that you actually have to experience and see it and be in one before you can kind of say, oh, okay, maybe it is something that isn't you know so bad or it is feasible or doable. Um, uh, but I didn't know that project was going on, so that's that's interesting and good to hear. Yeah, so thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. I just like to add a little point about can I can I may I speak about a project that was done through Queen's University on Indigenous housing that is right. tied very well uh, to the tiny housing idea, except it's more um, uh, comprehensive in that it's addressing things like mental uh, health and wellness and all uh, many many aspects of that. But the use of wood being uh, a key thing in um, in the and I think that there's an opportunity to do some really cool um, exploration of that kind not a tiny house but the same principles an active uh, or an active house where the heating system is is um, uh, very very advanced so yeah. I just wonder if they can be connected somehow right no, that's a really good point. Yeah, more of a more of like a full circle self-sustaining type of uh, concept or idea. Yep, that's a great suggestion. Um, I was just wanting to check the comment box quickly and see if anybody chimed in with any questions. I don't see any. And then if there was anybody I missed um, on the roundtable sessions at one time, and I see there's some new names up there. Ken Davies, if you wanted to chime in and if you had anything to add. If not, that's... No, no, at this point in time, thanks. Okay. Thanks for asking, though. Yep, no problem. Okay, so I think we've covered off everybody. I see there's a Keys, there's a Keys Job Center logo up, but I don't, it doesn't have a name. I'm hoping it is Karen, uh, maybe, or Varley. No? Okay, so investment readiness is something we talked a lot about in the last session, too. Um, and just how different municipalities go about sharing that information uh, about lots that they have vacant or service lots that are available. So that seemed to be of interest. Does anybody have any um, potential 
solutions or any new opportunities that they've seen in that regard uh, the last little while? Whether it was of real estate, maybe sharing or updating local uh, investment readiness websites, anything like that, no? Okay, and then back to my notes. Uh, Automation, anybody seen any um, process automation uh, kind of hijacked into <laughs> a faster process to remove the human handling type of thing because of COVID? So, you know, almost like a forced automation of processes that any businesses have uh, pivoted to or adapted to. We've seen quite a bit of that. Nobody else? One of the things that came up in a tourism study was the need to have more automation, especially in the accommodations. So do people really need in this day and age to have to check in? Can they not pre-check in online and then be sent their room key um, and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, so that was one thing that came up. People are looking for more technology. I think, um, as well as making sure if everyone is focused on shopping local, making sure that some of the older businesses who may be set in their way also have the opportunity to build a website or know how to build a website or can be Adapt. able to offer their services online. Cause I think a lot of them are still reluctant to go digital and have their services offered online. Um, but it is a simple solution and I think that especially during the holidays and with our second wave coming up, if that's not an, a service they're providing, they will lose their business to the Amazons of the world or online yeah. shopping. So it'll yeah. be sad to see some of the mom and pop stores not survive because they don't offer online shopping. Yeah, because they didn't adapt. And I think the digital Main Street program is really yeah. great. And I, I've seen a lot of businesses take advantage of that. I, I still think there's an, a lot more that, that could and should, but you're right. People were very reluctant. A lot of them, I think, were, you know, forced into it as a result of COVID. Well, there's still that handful that are like, no, that this is the way we operate our business and that's that's the way we do it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, transportation, I think, is another issue that a lot of them face for online orders. Like, how do they get them delivered and, and that type of thing. I think we should see probably uh, that be addressed in the near future as well. Yeah, I almost um, wonder if there's like an Uber delivery service where if yeah. you did order something that you can easily for five dollars or ten dollars have a package delivered to you because i do think that is probably one of the biggest challenges for the local businesses is once someone orders online how do they get it to that person's door absolutely yeah for sure because not everybody's as big as amazon right so <laughs> yeah sure uh internet came up in, in the chat box rural internet which yeah, that was a big topic of conversation in the last session too. I think especially with uh, students having to be homeschooled and you know taking their classes online, it really brought attention to the fact that you know a lot of families, rural families, don't have internet and didn't have access to that for school-age children. So I think that shed another type of light on the internet access that we are lacking in some areas. So uh, you know, there's always uh, always steps being made to improve that, but. I think it should probably pick up faster now. I see that it is 206, so I don't know. I think there's gonna be a video that kind of kicks in at the end, like a wrap up video. So we may all just get cut off from speaking and that goes on. So just in case that happens. Um, but thank Sorry, you all. Just, for... just interrupt, it's Patrick with Baldwin's. You just go ahead and let me know when you want me to roll the video. Sure, um, maybe if there's just a, another minute, if anybody wants to chime in with anything or grab other people's contact information. You can do it in the chat, even if you wanted. I just wanted to thank Valley Heartland for being a resource. I know a lot of the businesses didn't know where to turn this year. And I know you and your team have been very helpful in pointing people in the right direction, how to fill out the grants and stuff. So um, I think you guys have had a very, very busy year, as well as a lot of the people in the ECDEV um, within the region. So just a kudos to everybody who have supported all the small businesses as a resource with all of your communication, all of your emails. So kudos to everybody um, on your team, as well as um, all other people within the region who helped to communicate out as things were changing on a weekly basis. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. Thanks, Lisa. It's, uh, it's definitely been a collective um, and joint efforts all around. So that's great. Thank you. 
Um, with that, I will sign off and say everybody have a great weekend. Thanks again for joining our chat room and chatting with us today and for attending the summit. Um, take care, guys.